Hello, this is Walker Physics, 4th edition. We're in Chapter 7 on Work and Kinetic Energy, and this is number 30 from the end of the chapter questions. A 65-kilogram bicyclist rides his 8.8-kilogram bicycle with a speed of 14 meters per second. How much work must be done by the brakes to bring the bike and the rider to a stop? Okay, so it would be negative work. So what is the friction of the brake on the wheel, on the wheel on the road, in order to bring that to a stop? So the energy is based upon his velocity, right? So we're gonna need, we're gonna need uh, W equals one half mv squared. We have to also know that in this case, work is gonna be negative because we're the bicycle is going to the right, but the brakes are trying to make it go to the left. It's it's putting a force on the other side. That's why he's slowing down. So we'll probably have to put a negative someplace. All right. So his he's sixty five. The bicycle the bicycle is eight point eight. So we're gonna have to to multi add that together. So we have let me just write that down sixty five plus eight point eight together. And then, uh, how fast is he going? 14. So we'll do this. That'll give us the work, and then we'll have to make that negative. All right, so that gives us 7232.4 joules. How many significant digits? 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, so this is 7200 joules. All right, that's, is that A? How much work? Yeah, this is A. Okay, now that work is being done opposite to the bike, so it's doing 7,200 joules of work negative to the bike. It's doing it in the other direction. It's trying to stop him, okay? What's the next question? How far does the bicycle travel if it takes four seconds to come to rest? <laughs> Okay, the D is the travel. So remember the only other formula we know is force times distance, and that's what we're trying to find. So we have the work. We just need to know uh, the force, okay? The other thing that we know is that rate times time equals uh, distance. So velocity, the average velocity times the time equals the distance, and that would be the same distance. So there we can use that because we need a, a to put the four seconds somewhere. So if we can get if we can get this, then we also know that it's one half mv squared. That work is the same, one half av squared. We'll get the v, then put it in vt equals D, and we should be able to find the, the, the V, or the D. Okay, that's the game plan, if you understood even a word of that. So, what do we had? We have to do a average velocity, okay, because rate times time equals distance, this is average, so you have to take the final velocity is 14, and its initial velocity, I assume, was zero, is that right? So that means that its average velocity has to average that together. And so you're going to have 7 meters per second times 4 seconds gives me a 28 meters distance. Oh, is that all I needed to do? What's the last one? What's the magnitude? Oh, I see. So we found, we found D first. We're going to put it in here. And we've got work, we've got distance, and we'll find force. No, the math is easy. This was nothing compared to the last question. All right, so we know that the distance is 28 meters. We know the work is 7,200 joules. Is that right? 7,200. And that's all. So 7,200 joules equals F times 28. Divide by 28. Force equals... 257 newtons, two significant figures, 
260 newtons. Cool, beans, that is, all right, so here's B and here's C. All right, thanks.